It is an indisputable fact that the world is dependent on agriculture. But it is also true that only 11% of the Earth's land is ideally cultivable. Consequently, the availability of cultivable soil is an irreplaceable and basic necessity for addressing the ever-growing needs of the world's population. However, the capacity of the soil is being stretched to its limit owing to fast-paced human development and unchecked exploitation of land. This places a critical challenge before man. Much is required to be done in terms of preserving the cultivability and sustainability of the soil and reversing the damage that has been done. A ray of hope has been provided by a World Bank project in Laos Plateau, China, reversing desertification on a large scale, successfully rehabilitating the damaged ecosystem. Today, another region of great concern is the Sahel, which is currently facing a similar challenge. The question is, can the methods employed to reverse desertification in the lowest plateau be used to the same purpose in the Sahel? In order to address this question adequately, we need to analyze both similarities and differences between the two scenarios in terms of geographic, demographic, and political considerations, and technology. Quite like the Loess, Sahel is also a semi-arid region, very prone to erosion and desertification. The two areas follow distinct rainfall patterns. While Loess receives short, high-intensity rain every summer, Sahel has followed a cyclical pattern with some years being too wet and others being too dry. However, in both cases, the rainfall pattern has been unreliable with fluctuations. Consequently, all measures that were successfully applied in Loess aiming at retaining water would be recommendable for Sahel as well. Building small dams, stone walls, and barricades are methods which can be replicated for capturing and utilizing available water and preventing its runoff. Similarly, rehabilitation of ecosystems through plantation of trees, shrubs, and natural vegetation will benefit the environment, not only by retaining water through its root systems and holding the soil firmly in place, but also by providing canopy to the land and protecting it from sun baking and cracking in the extreme heat of the Sahel. However, recognizing the long drought suffered by Sahel, we have to use additional measures like water harvesting, bore well irrigation, and development of canal systems. Despite going through a long-term drought and the rainfall remaining very low over the last decade in the western part of the Sahel, it has been observed that the runoff and river discharges have increased paradoxically in this region. Recognized as the Sahelian paradox, this has been noticed in rivers like Nakambe River and riverbank tributaries of the Niger River. Recovering water from these by linking them to canal network will be like making amends for the runoff water. It may also be worthwhile to connect the other major rivers of the region like Senegal and Niger rivers and even to divert plentiful water of rivers from Congo. Since unlike Loess, the terrestrial features like steep slopes and gullies are not part of the topography of Sahel, measures like conversion of slope lands to terraced lands and use of sedimentation storage dams for filling gullies may not be relevant here. Similarly, measures taken in lowest, like greenhouses, may not be relevant in Sahel owing to the much higher temperature range here. In relation to human population trends, overpopulation and destructive human practices have caused desertification in both cases. Land degradation was caused by deforestation, overgrazing, continuous cropping, monocropping, and neglect for the ecosystem. Consequently, all measures that were successfully deployed in Loess to control and prevent such harmful practices can be used here also. Adopting crop rotation with fallows to maintain soil fertility, banning tree cutting, preventing free grazing, and keeping natural vegetation alongside farmed land are some measures that are relevant to Sahel also. Good land management methods used in Loess that focused on allotment of land to families with long-term land use rights and deployment of incentives will be recommendable in Sahel too. However, detrimental practices typical of Sahel like slash and burn of unwanted vegetation will need to be addressed specifically. In terms of political considerations, the two scenarios are markedly different, with Loas being a part of a single country with a strong communist government, while Sahel being spread across five countries with weak governments. The government control and the law and order in each of the five countries in Sahel is no way comparable to that in China. Hence, the response and cooperation of locals for such endeavors is uncertain. Additional challenges in Sahel are in form of conflicts resulting from migration of people fighting for scarce resources and corruption hampering development. Consequently, additional efforts need to be made to ensure that international aid is used for the desired purpose and percolates to the right people. 
A determined effort is required to make the five nations of Sahel as well as some neighboring states cooperate constructively. Educating them about mutual benefits of reversing desertification in Sahel will help. River water sharing and transnational irrigation networks could be important examples of such cooperation. Despite huge technological advances across the world, Sahel remains to be pretty backward with respect to availability and use of technological solutions. Consequently, it will be hugely dependent on international aid for ready-made solutions. Though we current technology, Sahel may be in greater need of it for things like drip irrigation, advanced agricultural techniques, and lift irrigation for canal networks. Technology for mapping land using GIS, as shown in LOAS, will be pertinent in Sahel also.